finally got moved down to Alabama and it's time to set up for a winter garden and this is one of the projects that we're working on and you can also see I think you can see in the background I'm also got a aquaponics uh, a couple of IBC tanks that we're going to be working on setting up an aquaponics and uh, system that will be kicking off but today we're going to be talking about how to build these wicking beds So I guess the first thing we should talk about starting with is one of these um, uh, kiddie pools. And, and this came from one of the big box stores. I think we paid uh, 7 or $8 for, for each one of these kiddie pools. And um, that's all you need, really. These pots, uh, you can use whatever kind of pot you want. In our case, we had these nursery pots setting around. Uh, we were able to grab them for free. And if I would wanted to, uh, you, or if you want to, you can go around and drill holes all around these things to make them an air pruning wicking pot system. Um, but in our case, we decided not to because winter's coming up and we really do want to be able to control the moisture, control the warmth of the soil. We know we probably will have to throw covering over top of this. Uh, and or we can pick these things up and we can move them inside if it gets really cold and we have to. Now, if they were an air pruning pot, uh, it would be a little bit harder to do that. Secondly, you'll have to put the pots in the kiddie pool and uh, then really that's all you need to do and come up with some kind of rock um, or aggregate to fill this up so that when you have water that comes up a couple of inches in the bottom of here, um, you need to at least uh, uh, be able to cover the surface of the water so you don't have issues with mosquitoes. We used a larger rock uh, in the bottom and then we worked our way up from a uh, to a medium sized rock let's say to a much smaller rock and then uh, uh, filtered all this out from property or from the gravel and rock that we have on site here where we live. It didn't cost us anything to build these wicking pots or, or wicking beds with exception of the cost of the kiddie pool, um, some of this line that we had to buy and some fittings but now that we have it, these things can be reused over and over again. They'll last for seasons to come. Uh, we transplanted some peppers into here, some uh, tomatoes you can see. They don't look so hot right now, but they were just transplanted yesterday. Some Malabar spinach we have rooting here in the water and in the pot. Uh, this is a Malabar spinach that was growing through the summer. We trimmed it back. It wasn't doing so well in the garden. We moved it over here, and now look at the way it's taken off. I've got Alabama jumpers growing in the large uh, wicking pot here and over here on this side again these are the ones we just transplanted in yesterday but I put a good two handfuls of, of uh, red wigglers right here on top and they're working their way into in, into the pots and they'll provide a natural fertilizer and we really won't have to do much fertilization to these tomatoes um, simply because of the properties that the red wigglers and the worms give us uh, in the pots. They'll breed, this will become a worm farm, and then we'll continue to uh, uh, separate them out and plant them in these other pots. Now let's talk about the float system. I've got a lot of still photos for you and you can certainly go and take a look at the album that I have on Google Plus um, in more detail. But if you'd like to take a look down here in the float system, what we have is these two or three dollar floats. And I'll put a, I can't remember the exact cost. I think they were to two fifty to three dollars. Um, but this is a float that uh, uh, I simply have mounted in a, a a clear plastic box that's painted. I painted it black on the underside to keep the light from bleeding through, and uh, green on the top just for aesthetics purposes. Uh, the float sets here maintains the water level at uh, it's about a three inch water level and this is a, an entirely maintenance free system so for us which we're very uh, stretched for time we don't have a lot of time to do gardening projects and, and, and because we don't have a lot of time to do gardening projects we try to set up as, as things to be as automated as possible and in a world in a modern world where we're we're all stretched for time and there's a demand for our time uh, this is something that you can do to help you maintain uh, a, a little bit more food security for your family uh, even though you may have uh, many other responsibilities that's what we're doing to help solve that problem the system here where I have it, I have it set up to be able to accept the hose on the one end 
uh, the garden hose on one end and then on this end we can continue to expand this. Um, we could go ahead and put wicking pots on the, the left side of this main rail or the manifold system and this, uh, these wicking beds can just be expanded and you can grow a lot of food in a small amount of space. I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's thought provoking. I know it's not something that, it's something that other people are doing. Um, however, I'm hoping that using, showing you how you can uh, filter your own rock, uh, I will do another video on that, how to screen your own rock from your, from your premises. And, uh, and I've been doing that using the worm casting separator, which I built entirely to have a multi-purpose, uh, multi-function or be multi-purpose and uh, multi-function use. So I don't know how to say what I'm trying to say. But anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up if you like what you see and give us a thumbs down if you don't like it. Uh, we appreciate a rating and it helps us to know how to move forward with future videos. God bless.